this is kind of a bummer. Nine months ago, Marathon was announced and it was a glimpse at an interesting take on the classic series, but more of a modernized twist to it. Still set in that sci-fi futuristic world, but it looked to be a cool introduction into what could have been a growing field of games with the extraction loop. But after community ARG in a way that we could all participate in like unlocking the announcement of it, after the announcement trailer and a peek behind the curtain as a video documentary a little bit later, we got our first glimpse at it here. And it was something that was interesting, didn't seem for everybody perhaps, but for those that could appreciate it, it was something that was cool and you could look forward to. However, in the last 24 to 36 hours, depending on when you watch this or when this video is published, a lot of people are a bit upset with the direction we're going to see this game take a shift to as of recent reports. Today, we're breaking it down, letting you know all you need to, but as we go along, drop your thoughts down below, drop a like if you enjoyed the video, or you're enjoying this sort of variety in FPS content, and consider subscribing to make sure you stay up to date with all of it. We're getting back into a few COD videos and a couple of things for like season three and other things upcoming this weekend that were back to form, perhaps, I guess you could say. But in the meantime, let's dive into some discussion about Marathon. So like I said, not a whole ton was officially detailed about the game itself. We, of course, only got that announcement trailer that it was coming. There was no ETA really attached to it or anything like that, but we ended up learning from insider reports that the game was shaping up to be very Tarkov-like, with a focus on no load times and very minimal queue times, and also being that it's likely a free-to-play game, it'd be a live service title with highly customizable characters and authentic Bungie FPS experiences. Now, later on, about eight months or so after the first reports, right around when this actually was announced officially, another report came out that detailed a bit more of the gameplay loop, detailing that it would be three-person squads, but you could also have those solo options, however, and you'd have the ability to extract without your squad, I'd say kind of like akin to right now, maybe DMZ or Modern Warfare Zombies, where you can extract and the rest of your squad can still continue on as they'd like. There's reportedly going to be an oxygen system, which I believe is what you saw in that announcement trailer with the counting down on the characters back here. If you saw that a couple of frames, it would seemingly have just lower and lower numbers. But apparently if the player loses oxygen, you'd lose health eventually. Extracting before you run out of oxygen and that health was the main goal, but players could also find O2 canisters in the match or buy them at a steep price in the in-game markets. Injuries were also meant to play into that oxygen system with examples of being shot in the waist, affecting your oxygen supply and maybe some of your reserves that you had that would make it deplete quicker. Additionally, you could also be concussed where the player's screen would periodically blur, but you'd have counters in the way of a perk system here that would counterbalance that kind of stuff. Things like faster revives, less usage of oxygen, faster movement in water, etc., all allowing for more gameplay changes that could be beneficial. But but then we saw further reporting that would just essentially boil down the gameplay loop to number one, choosing your missions to complete in-game, buying and choosing your loadouts, perk, ability, and gear, dropping into the server, hunting for loot, completing missions, exploring and finding secrets, extracting, spending your XP on upgrades, all then to rinse and repeat to do it all over again. That is, again, kind of the basis of most extraction games, but that was essentially the build that was mentioned here months back. Final details included the prospect of a permadeath feature, which most times you'd just lose your weapons, artifacts, and currency, and otherwise wouldn't lose things like your perks, but a permadeath or like full death was something that was possible. It was also mentioned that there were three different maps for Marathon being made, but if all three would launch at the same time, there was no information on that. And again, the biggest was there was no release date for the game at all. There still is not. So if this is something that by the background gameplay, it looks cool to you, which by the way, apologies, there's not a whole ton of footage out there, so it's probably just going to be looped footage. But anyways, the reaction initially kind of varied depending on who you looked for a reaction out of. The hardcore marathon fans, like the original fans, it wasn't the best reaction, but I think looking back at it, it was more so an upset nature with a departure from the original source material. Narratively, though, it did seem like there was something that they could build out to fit that universe still. Personally, I didn't really care either way. I think that it was a way to introduce perhaps newer fans to the IP of classic times, and perhaps the story at large, there's that connectivity that could potentially happen between the originals of the 90s and the retelling here or new variation of what we'd see with this full game. At least in theory, I think that could work. 
But that's where we come to today and why myself and so many others are a little bummed by what we've seen here out of this. A couple of months back, the game switched to leadership and according to IGN, Marathon will now have a selectable cast of heroes rather than custom player characters. The new report from IGN implies the game's direction has shifted a little since the reports, including the change that will move away from custom player characters in favor of a relatable cast of heroes. This means that Marathon will fall in a similar vein to Apex Legends or Warzone, where players can only pick from a select pool of customization options per character. Presumably, the decision has been made to increase its live service monetization potential. Now, that's where I'm bummed about this, because there's a couple of different things factoring into this. Number one, there's seemingly no more memorable nature to progression at that point. Extraction games as a whole usually have that built-in narrative that every game has stakes. Everything is, well, if you die, you lose everything that you have naturally, but you kind of see that stripped away with a default hero selection class. And with pre-made classes, you lose out on anything personally for a player in that journey along the way as well that you'd have otherwise. Destiny did that well, despite plenty of other legitimate concerns or dislikes with the games over the years. The entire gameplay loop as a whole, again, kind of builds into that with the extraction shooter genre. But not to mention the thing that I'm also not looking forward to hearing is the seemingly being in favor of monetizing the game further. I get that it might be a necessity if it's a free to play title. I get the gameplay loop doesn't allow for a whole bunch of other ways to generate revenue outside of cosmetics being sort of the only viable route unless you want to go with pay to win things. But like that still sucks to hear this early on, right? Like in a report months and months out from when anything has been confirmed that the money is the main focus here on that gameplay loop. I mean, like, sure, that might be a given. It's a necessity, again, for game dev to continue. But when we know, like, 10 things total about the game, and one of those 10 things is that fundamental decisions are made to, quote, increase the live service monetization potential, like, I'd like to hear more about the game first, please. Like, right? Like, I, I can't be the only one off put by that nature. So, like, I'm very much so hoping that I'm wrong. I'm hoping that things can be turned around here. And I love the aesthetic of what we've seen already in that announcement trailer. I love the potential of the world building for the existing universe. Even if that might be a hot take, I think there's potential for a solid gameplay loop from what was previously detailed for the extraction loop of this. But like, I don't know, man, it's just that's not what I was hoping to hear when I learned more about Marathon. We've been waiting for eight, nine months here to learn more about the game. And the first report from a credit source here out of this is that it's not looking too great in regards to it that's not it's not what i wanted to hear so bit upsetting and uh that's where we're at here at this so wanted to fill you guys in a little bit on what was going on with marathon here again this is a brand new report here out of the last 24 to 36 hours depending on when you watch this video so and then your thoughts down below. Are you guys still looking forward to Marathon? Were you ever? Or is it something that you don't mind too much, this report? Or is it something that derails your interest entirely? Whatever the case, drop your thoughts down below. But if you enjoyed the video, do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things Marathon in the future. Other stuff, again, we're getting back to some COD content and other FPS titles here that I think you guys will enjoy. So make sure you guys subscribe for more. But for now, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you later. Take care and peace.